All right, this week the topic is pandas, a tool for analyzing tabular data. So we've talked a lot about NumPy and various tools for working with collections of numbers and, and dimensional arrays. So pandas is a tool for what's called a data frame, which is a kind of, if you've worked with data in tables such as Excel files or CSV files, where you have a collection of columns and rows, and that's how your data is organized. That's what Pandas for, is for in Python. Pandas is really powerful. That's why we're spending two weeks on it in this class. We'll have our interactive lecture after two weeks of videos. And Pandas is really useful for getting data from all kinds of places. From There are lots of places published data using either APIs or published CSV files or databases. And Pandas is a common wrapper around all these things that produce similar kinds of data and all the things you might want to do for analyzing that. So there's a lot of APIs for public data in Norway in particular that you'll find links to here and we'll work on we'll work with those a bit more later but in this example we're going to be working with some local data. A really good resource um, are the pandas tutorials. There are lots of tutorials. It's a really popular library that can do lots and lots of things so even in two weeks we can only touch the surface and there are a lot of really good resources um, at these links and, and including this book for getting really familiar with pandas. So if you don't have it, you can install it. The package is called pandas. You can install it with pip or conda and we'll get started um, loading the library. So just like with numpy, where we had arrays, which are collections of numbers, potentially n dimensional collections, the basic structure of pandas is built on top of numpy and it's called a series. So that's a series is a one dimensional collection of things. They can be numbers, they can be strings, they can be dates. The main thing that distinguishes a series from an array is that a series has an index. So with a simple array, your index goes 0, 1, 2, 3. But in pandas, the series can have an index uh, that's something else. So it could be, this index can be dates, it can be any, anything. So here we'll construct a series with some numbers, and uh, numpy is not a number. And we can see it automatically constructed the index using uh, consecutive integers, but you can also tell it what the index should be. Um, you can have repeating values, the index doesn't have to be unique. So there we have the same numbers in the same sequence, but now the index labels are the strings that we, we were given. Pandas is really widely used for time series data, so that what that means is an index, where your index is points in time, and then all your data is corresponding to, to like measurements at a point in time, such as from a weather station or you know a stock history or some, any kind of sensor data. So we can create a series where the index is our date range. So now we have essentially measurements over time. So a data frame is a collection of series which have names and share the same index. So this is where we get our rows and columns. So here we create a dictionary where the keys are the names of our columns and the values are the, the values along those columns. And so if you don't pass an index, it'll always create a default index that's just consecutive integers. So here we have a table with two columns, apples and pears. And then at each index, we have one value each for apples and pears. We could potentially have a different index where our index is actually the customer who purchased the apples or pears, and we can pass that as the index to the data frame. So here the index is now names, and the so each row corresponds to a person. You know, maybe Marie bought three apples and six pears. Now, when you want to get data out, you can use the lock shorthand for locating um, data. And you can do index access on that and say, show me where the index is equal to Hans. And there we get just the row of apples and pears for Hans. And if you look at what type that is, that's a, that is itself a series, but now it's the transpose. Instead of the series this way, it's the series across for Hans. You can take uh, the pandas concatenation function to take two series and merge them together. And you'll see series one has A and B as the index. Series two has A and C as the index. And so if we concatenate those, what do we get? We see it finds where the index is A and sees that both series 1 and series 2 have A. So that's 1 and 3. That's 1 and 3. And for B, series 1 has information. So there's a 2 there. Series 2 has nothing for B, so that gets replaced with not a number. And then the opposite is true for C. Series 2 has C, but series 1 doesn't, so there's not a number there. So often when you're working with pandas, there's a lot of missing data, and pandas gives you a bunch of utilities for locating that missing data. Pandas has a lot of tools for reading files, so you can store tabular data in all kinds of formats, and different places will provide it in different ways. And pandas has a lot of reading utilities for reading all these files. So if we look at all the read functions for how pandas can get table data, it can come from your clipboard on your computer, it can read CSV files, it can read Excel files. Feather is a, an efficient serialization format for tabular data. Um, there are domain-specific files common in particular 
scientific domains. It can read SQL. It can parse HTML files. It can read uh, JSON files in a particular format. And that's the gist of creating data frames and loading them and, and being able to look at them. So now that we've seen a little bit about kind of what a data frame is and how to uh, how to create them, usually you start with some data source. You know, you're not just creating it from random numbers. You have some provider of data. So here in our repo, we have downloaded some CSV files from the BSeq and Oslo BSeq uh, data. And they have a lot of records. If we look at the content in there, there's a couple hundred thousand records, lines in that, in that CSV file. So we can use the pandas read CSV function. So that takes a, a path to a file. And then optionally, it takes a separator argument because there's lots of actual different kinds of CSVs that maybe use commas, maybe use tabs, maybe use commas and spaces, maybe don't use spaces. So read CSV is actually very powerful in terms of how it can parse a CSV type data. So after we've loaded that, you can see that trips is now a table and the columns have names. It has the default index. They have a start station and a start time and an end time and an end station. We can look at just sections of that with head gives us the first five rows. We can look at the types of those columns. And we can see that the automatic detection failed for the times because those should be dates. And also the end station should be an integer because these were integer tags. So if we want to fix the start and end times, we can tell pandas that it should parse these dates. And we need to give it a special date parser because the date formats in this data set are inconsistent. And we need to uh, use this function in order to parse that data um, and make sure that it loads it consistently as date time values. And so after that's done, we can look at the D types and we can see we fixed the start and end are now date time objects in UTC and the end station is still uh, afloat. So if we peek now, it looks similar, but these are now nicely printed um, actual dates that pandas understand. So if you use date functions on them, that'll, that'll work. Fixing end station, now we can say specify rather than let pandas guess what type it should be, specify that the D type for end station should be an integer but this time it fails. And when we look at why it fails, we can say it has not a number. So pandas can't actually use not a number with integers. Um, you need to use floats. So that's why it uh, uses a floating point value for, for the end station, because it can't actually represent not a number uh, with an integer data type. So that's our introduction to pandas, where we have what are columns, what are series, what's an index, and um, how do we load our data, for example, from a CSV file. And in the next section, we're going to talk about how do we select data and work with that data and find subsets and things.